street games, and they were almost like sport extensions of the block party. It wasn't just about basketball, it was about culture. Just trying to figure out how we could go see some of these games. They added a disrespect. That's how you break somebody. This is the story of the greatest mixtape ever. That young LeBron James. That's a clip of the new documentary, The Greatest Mixtape Ever, which chronicles how hip hop and hoop dreams became a movement. You hear me? It's a movement. The mastermind behind the film is one of New York's very own, Set Free Richardson, who hails from ooh, ooh, the Boogie Down Bronx, Baychester <laughs> Avenue, baby. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Before we get into your film, first of all, are you Knicks or Nets? Ooh, um, I'm New York. I'm New York basketball. Okay. Um, I'll leave it at that. And all I right. have friends on both teams, so I gotta Fine. leave it, you know, so you, political. You gotta be down the middle. Who's your money exactly. on? For, who's your money on for tonight? I'm going with Boston. Okay. Um, yeah, I have to. We gotta stay on the East Coast. We all right. I like it. I like it. We have to. Well, congratulations on making this film. You are basically the reason why hip hop and basketball are just inextricably linked. So the film well, follows the journey. Of course, the film follows the journey from the beginning, but this is not just about sports. This truly is about the culture. When I think about how many times a day me or someone I know says for the culture, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's become part of our lexicon. Can you talk about that and how it's become a phenomenon? Yeah, I think, I think, um, what happened is, it, you know, with social media and media, these things always live together. You know, growing up, we always went to the playground and heard the DJ in the background, mm -hmm. and you know. Um, but you know, once the, the like the mixtape came and showed it, the music and hip hop and basketball all together on the product, it, that was the magnifying glass. And you know, even with um, all the NBA players now, they you know they have social media and mm -hmm. they get to show themselves and they car listening to hip hop and, you know, working out to hip hop beats and hip hop songs. So I think it, it's always been there. It's just, it finally got packaged for the world to see it. Thank goodness it did because the world, we're all here to see it. You, in the clip, we show a lot of street ball and there is a big difference. You know, mm -hmm. there's ball that you play on the hardwood and there's ball you play at Rucker Park and there's professional ball. Mm -hmm. Your and one mixtapes became a hot commodity. Uh, and kind of merged these these worlds. Tell us about how we see that play out in the film. Oh um, yeah, basically the film the film starts off with like just educating you know and showing people what street ball was, how to flare, you know, how the excitement, how the crowds and you know are really interact with the game, and then we kind of take them through a timeline of next you know how these VHS tapes of Ray for Austin and mm -hmm. a bunch of other New York street ball legends like. You know, main event of the future headache was they was all featured in the tape, and then um, the next part of the tape, the the, sh the movie, is me putting together the music with the VHS tapes, and then we just go through the whole timeline of how we had to find the rest of the, the New York City legends to be a part of this movement to to create like a, a mixtape team, the N one mixtape team and now we all form to continue making more volumes of the tape and then how the, the tape changed the world of just you know really intertwining hip-hop and basketball and what it did to the culture of basketball how it, it got hip-hop on you know other radars that it never was on and just the influence on the nba today it is remarkable to see it sort of play out throughout the decades. I think the mixtape itself has truly taken on a form of its own because you could you see the word mixtape in other parts of popular culture. I remember there was a through line on the show Lost that, you know, where he says, you want me to make you a mixtape? And I was like, how is this white <laughs> actor talking about a mixtape? But it, I think it speaks to the, to the fact that it really is a phenomenon. Any chance we're going to see the mixtape make a comeback? Uh, I think... For for me, it's it's already not not just the and one mixtape, but it's you know it's a I think the mixtape is just a, a way of life now. You see kids taking their own highlights mm -hmm. on their social media, Instagram, and putting beat music behind it. I, I seen even Sports Center has an SC mixtape. So I, I don't think you know, now. I think the mixtape is just a way of life for any genre of music, also mixed with you know, some type of culture. So I don't know if it'll be like an and one mixtape return, but I think the word mixtape and the legacy of music and different cultures formed together is gonna go on for a long time. Can you maybe do an N2 mixtape and bring it to baseball? Because <laughs> I need to do something for, for, 
for Major League Baseball and make it the phenomenon that, that hip-hop and basketball has become? I think, I think the world's waiting for that. I think we, we, we need to knock it out the park and, and try to make that happen. I will be your number one hype woman. Set free Richardson, <laughs> congratulations, and thank you for spending time with us this morning. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity. Of course. You can catch the greatest mixtape ever documentary on ESPN.